Deep within the ruins of Summer Grove lies countless treasures, unspeakable monsters, and oddly colorful mushrooms. Hello and welcome to Bardcraft. Ruins are great because they remind us how quickly times can change and how empires fall. But most importantly, they are among the best types of terrain you can have on your table, so let's see how to make them. First I'm gonna show you some high quality cutting, along with noises. Feel free to skip ahead if you have already mastered the art of the blade. I began by cutting a bunch of bricks from XPS foam. Keep in mind there are good material alternatives such as EVA foam and egg cartons. Anyway, with the moderately sharp kitchen knife you can cut the foam without ever using a hot wire cutter. Drawing cuts are key. If you're struggling with the cuts, you haven't practiced the blade well enough. Once I had worked the foam into thinner bits, I cut out the bricks in an exceptionally satisfying manner. To keep my edge sharp enough for this, I usually work it a few times with a rough file. That's it. There is no super sharp blade, only drawing cuts and putting a few skill points into one handed. After some additional cutting noises, I had enough bricks. One note box of bricks is just the right amount for this project. The way I texture these is simple. Put all the bits into a box containing small stones. Then shake. Nothing can go wrong. Okay, those are some nice textures. Here I was thinking, as in most projects where you make a set of several pieces, I have probably underestimated the amount of work that is required. Yeah. All done. These have a pleasant scent of styrofoam and stone. Mm. Kind of fun to play around with as well. Okay, let's take a look at the bricks. Bits of varying size, thickness and shape are perfect for ruins. The ruins get more depth when built with these pieces. And here are the stones I used for texturing. Next I'll show you how to make the foundations and shape of the ruins. Thin cardboard and cardstock is good for this. First I cut various shapes of walls. I made sure to include doorways, cozy corners and heavy cover for miniatures. I wasn't sure of how sturdy the ruins become after adding the bricks, so I didn't make any larger ruins than this from cardstock. Here there will be a nice window and there shall be a wooden floor. Nice spot for the archers to peek out from. For the largest ruins I used this thin cardboard. The edge of a thick cardboard is more difficult to hide with bricks, so I don't recommend that. This one will be of impressive height. A few windows here, and then a large doorway. This is easy to cut. Okay, kind of looks like a stupid face. Let's fix that. Yeah, that's better. Up here I planned to build a platform. The other large one had a glossy surface. I made sure to remove that so paint and glue sticks well. I'll show all of these once I get them based. Quick and easy. I hot glued the walls onto a cardboard piece. Then cut the base into a nice shape. The bases should be quite small so that the ruins can be assembled into complexes. Also, with less surface to cover, you'll be saving paint, flocking and time.
Laying on the bricks is pretty straightforward. Gluing them on takes some time, but if you set yourself a good pace, it's a much smaller task than expected. Some areas can be a bit tricky. Anyway, I'll give you a few pointers. Apply glue directly on the cardboard instead of putting it on individual bricks. Saves time and makes the walls more durable. Use the largest bricks for the lower parts, but don't be too organized. Also, try not to make the corners look awkward. When covering the borders of windows and doors, you can build a rough frame around. Also overlap a bit to hide the cardboard. The walls are two-sided. Cover both sides first, then finish the top by hiding the cardboard and so on. I believe building the wall on a piece of cardboard is faster and easier than stacking bricks into a wall. Also, the walls can be built much higher without having to wait for the glue to dry. What do you think? <laughs> Take a look at this. I found leftover bricks from my first ruin build. Back then I textured each brick individually, not recommended. Okay, we're done here. For the next step I cut up some pine bark. The chopped up bark works well as stones and general ground flocking, but seriously use sand and pebbles instead. I'm gonna show you how I use this. Okay, so after some cutting, I separated the different grain sizes. I like these bark stones, they have nice edges that look amazing when dry brushed. The finer choppings make good earth textures. This is how I made the ground on the base. First, plenty of PVA glue, slightly diluted. Then I placed a few of these bigger bits. Hmm, let's see. One here and a few here. After that, I sprinkled on the fine flocking. In previous builds, I have used a mixture with two large pieces. Let's hope this one is better. A few gentle taps and it's done. I also tried the medium bits before covering with the fine stuff. What can also look good is to create a slope down from the wall. Go ahead and cover some of the fallen bricks to create a messy pile of rubble. Most importantly, don't make your ruins look too clean. Okay, to begin painting I made my simple watery base coat from black, water and PVA glue. With this it's a bit easier to get paint into the gaps between the bricks. I poke the bristles of the brush into these gaps and move the brush around. Worked okay, but as you can see it was not that easy. Painting a set of large ruins by hand requires some patience and you should definitely not expect to have fun while doing it. You there, yes, you still have 5 ruins to paint after this one. I switched over to a smaller brush and fueled my efforts with plentiful oats. Alright, all done. Now in hindsight I got a good tip for you. If you make your ruins like this, paint the cardboard black before gluing the bricks. You'll save lots of time. As you can see, I painted the ground black as well. I continued by painting it with a dark brown. This is slightly diluted, so it gets in between the rubble as well. While at it, I used the same paint on a few bricks. At this point, I also packed up one ruin for Jacob. He wanted to paint and flock one. That's good, a bit less work for me. Okay, I then continued by painting the bricks with the grey. 
what I have found out is that painting some of the bricks grey and brown makes a huge difference. When I started the hobby I just painted black grey and tan. Works fine, but you won't even save that much time when skipping this step. I saved the grey and then covered the natural stones with a diluted dark blue. This may look a bit bright for now, but no worries, it gets darker when it dries. Back to the grey, I used this same paint to overbrush all bricks on the wall. Just brush gently with medium paint on the brush. Some spots on the ground can also be painted while we're at it. I looked at these stones and saw they were still wet, so I painted them later. If you want to introduce a friend to the glorious craft of terrain making, you could give him a ready to paint base coated piece of terrain. Everything from this step forward is fun and easy, so you might just trick an unsuspecting player into making terrain for your table in the future. Moving on, for dry brushing I mixed a tan from white, brown and green. I brushed most of it away, then painted over the walls. When dry brushing, remember that also your paint should be dry enough. Here you can see that I had perhaps a bit too much paint on the brush at first, but most importantly the paint was still too wet. It gets better though. I have found that some cheap craft paints are usually extra wet. Hmm, the rocks did turn blue, let's see how it works out. All done. Looking at this now, I realized I completely forgot one crucial step in the painting. The first layer of grey. I just started over and dry brushing on the black. No good. This looks okay, but not as good as with a grey layer. Next it is time to make the platforms. Here I'm using textured craft sticks that are just snapped into the right size and then simply glued into place. The foam is soft and there are many convenient cracks, so the plank floors are easy to make. Especially in a chaotic manner. I imagine some goblins have found these ruins and then decided to build their shabby floors so the ruins work as good watch posts and ambush spots. By the way, the reason I always prefer the simplest methods is to avoid pain and tightness from a sitting job. That's probably the reason why I forgot the grey layer while painting as well. I'm always in a hurry. Anyway, the floors are done. They are quite effortless to make and they look great. One more, this floor up here is extra shaky because I used whatever leftover bits I could find. It will be the greatest shooting spot on my table. The planks are now coated with a wash or a wood stain. If you just want to paint your planks, I recommend gluing them on before base coating the ruins. Alright, while the glue dries, it's a good opportunity to apply grass flocking. This time I put my flock into a little spice jar. Using the larger hole here, it's easy to get a good coverage. Start by applying a slightly watered down PVA glue on a bit over half of the ground. Then apply the flocking. This is homemade flocking, I'll put a link in the descriptions. This is how it looks when I'm done with the earthy green flock. I cared more about my craft than making a video, so I applied the flocking properly without worrying about getting a nice shot. Next comes a bright green flocking. I sprinkled this on a few spots, especially in the middle of grass patches. Well, after I was done, I got rid of the loose flocking and let it dry. A nice touch is to put some flocking on top of the walls as well. Now I'm gonna make the planks nicer. I applied the army painter quickshade with a sponge. 
for similar or even better results you can just use your own washes. I'll use some later as well. More drying time, so I decided to make miniature mushrooms from hot glue. A few colorful mushrooms amidst the ruins should look good. Once I got these beautiful blobs on their stalks, I painted the caps black. The idea is to make a simple highlight on top before applying colors. I just heavily dry brushed with the white. If you're getting into mini painting, small terrain bits can be good to practice on. That's what I'm gonna do. Here I'm also doing the same on a crappy mini I'm probably never gonna paint. Alright, after this zenithal highlight, which is usually done with a spray, it's easier to continue putting on colors on your minis. Let's see how that works out on the mushrooms. Yeah, a thin paint layer reveals the purpose of what we just did. I applied more blue. After that, the mushroom looked quite good. I then added the lighter blue on top. Ok, the paint comes loose after being wet too long. I recommend priming your mushrooms. After a quick fix, my first successful blend on a mushroom. Pretty simple, next thing I know I'll be doing this better on minis. This is what I painted. Go ahead and try simple blending on mushrooms if you're a peasant level painter like me. I definitely learned something useful here. Next I took my tiniest brush and painted the dots on the mushrooms with white. Nothing fancy here, from tabletop distance the messiest smudge will still look like a round dot. After this I cut the stems and glued on the mushrooms. Ok, some quick touches with washes next. I applied diluted brown paint around the walls and on the ground. As you might have noticed, I have missed some mid-tones in my paint job. The brown wash should take care of that. I applied most of it on the lower parts of the wall. Then I used a black-green wash on the planks. Let's take a look at Jacob's ruins before trying these out. More weathering, looks quite nice. These are versatile, you can assemble a larger ruined building or then just use them as scatter to fill up your table. I'll still build some more ladders, walkways and such. Other than that, these are done. Now go ahead and craft, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the content and why not watch one of these videos next. Also, if you appreciate the based display of art and want to see this channel rise from the ruins of the modern YouTube, consider supporting my work on Patreon. Thanks.